I think if somebody asked me what my favorite drivetrain for electric bikes right now, it'd probably be this. And Violo. They've been on the market for a little while, but they've really been growing in popularity. And I just think that they're really easy to use. And I like that. I don't know if it's because I'm lazy or what, but I just like something that's easy to use. I don't have to think about it too much. And I think some other drivetrains, that's kind of the case. And not to bash on them, I think they still have their place and I still really enjoy them. But somebody's asked me like, what I generally recommend like for a new rider, it's this. Yeah, I mean, I should explain what this is. This thing goes right here. This is the hub. Normally you might have like gears on the outside. This one's got gears on the inside, but the gears are not really gears. They're planets and these like input and output rings. It's a little strange, but it's it's called the continually variable transmission. It's actually somewhat common in automobiles, but not so common in bicycles, but it's becoming more common. This was originally introduced as a prototype in about the year 2000, and it was intended to be used on a bike that was trying to set the land speed record. And beyond just electric bikes, we're also seeing in other really heavy use scenarios like bike share. City Bike in New York City is actually now using this as their preferred drivetrain. They've used some other three-speed systems in the past, but they found that they've been able to really improve their maintenance intervals by implementing the Enviolo system because there's not actually too much maintenance on the hub itself. As I said before, you do have some maintenance over time with the cables, they might stretch out, that sort of thing, which I should note, um, I think a lot of times people might have trouble with like the cables or setting the bike up. It's really, very important that the cable length is set correctly. I see a lot of cases where people set the cable length incorrectly and they can actually tear the cable or create other sort of issues. So, you know, read the manual. I know not everybody likes to do that, but it's important to do, especially in this case. So just a warning, you heard it here. Another wear part that we've seen is the shifter and some earlier versions, they seem to not have been as durable as the current versions. And now they even have a, a wider range of shifters available, even a version that's specifically made for cargo bikes, which can handle the additional force that you might put on it in that case. But I should also note as a little tip for use, you really should let off your pedaling a little bit when you're shifting it. It can technically shift under load, but you're gonna put a lot less stress on the shifting mechanism if you let off your pedaling when you're shifting it. But another nice thing about this system is that you can shift it when you're stopped. And that's something that's pretty consistent throughout all internally geared hubs. This is considered an internally geared hub because the gears are on the inside, not on the outside, as you normally might find on a derailleur system. And in an urban environment, it's really helpful because you come to a stop and you can shift down and you're ready to go because you might not necessarily like remember to do it. Or maybe in one of the common applications, like a cargo bike, you're worrying about the kids in the front or your cargo that you're carrying and you forgot to shift when you came to a light, you know, you suddenly have to stop in an urban environment, you can easily shift down and, and get back into that lower gear and prepare yourself to start out again. And that's really helpful. So I think that's one of those things where people really appreciate it. Outside of that, I think that there's a lot of people that are just not so used to shifting gears specifically. So the idea that you can just twist it away from you to go into a lower gear and towards you to go into a higher gear. And the idea, it, because it's a continually variable transmission, you don't have steps to it. You know, normally a transmission on a car, so you have like a five speed manual transmission, which I know maybe people in the States are not as comfortable or familiar with that sort of thing, but basically you shift into those five individual gears or on a bicycle, you can shift seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now they even go up to 13 on the traditional derailleur. And some of them have even more than that on the internal hub, like the roll off, but it has a similar range as a traditional derailleur as far as the gears. Now this one is 380%, but you basically have infinite numbers of steps in between that. So as they say, like for the Enviolo hub, it's an infinite number of gear range. There's a couple different ways of shifting the system. This one uh, is a cable version on here. So you have two cables and one cable will push it into the lower gear and one cable will push it into a higher gear and you shift it up on the, the handlebars. But you also have automatic versions which are, can be fully automatic and actually you don't have to shift it at all. You just program in what assistance level you want and it's going to shift up or down. Reviewed a lot of bikes with this system on it, but I haven't really done that much of an in-depth video talking about it. I actually did a video about two years ago, a court from Electric Bike Review on this topic, and uh, we had some fun talking about it. I actually just talked to court 
yesterday. He's doing well, he's up in Canada. Yeah, if you ever wanna check out uh, another video channel that just has like loads of different bike reviews, electricbikereview.com is his website and the YouTube channel has the same name. So definitely worth the worth the watch there. Yeah, I just wanted to do my own and just kind of update like, you know, some of the stuff that we covered there and what's going on these days. One, they changed the name. So the company that started this is Fulbrook Technologies and it was started in the US, uh, in Texas more specifically. But actually the largest market for these at the moment happens to be in Europe. Partly because in Europe, internally geared hubs are a lot more popular. The bike market in the US tends to focus more on bikes for sport. Whereas in Europe, there is a large group of people that like to ride bikes for transportation. That idea is starting to, to grow more and more here in the States. But when you use a bike for transportation, one of the big things that you wanna do is have a bike that's low maintenance. That's where this comes in. I mean, it's fully sealed and there's no actually maintenance required inside the hub. Just over time, you might need to replace the cables or some of the like smaller wear parts, but the hub itself is virtually maintenance free. And I think a lot of people really appreciate that. I mean, I certainly do, but I don't wanna make this video too long, but I do wanna dive in a little bit deeper and get into maybe a bit more of the specifications and that sort of thing. One, I'd like to talk just about maybe some of the applications of this particular system, because it's really used pretty widely. I guess initially it was most commonly used just for urban bikes. You know, because they wanted something that's low maintenance, easy to use, and that sort of thing. But then we started seeing this hub being used a lot more with electric bikes, particularly electric bikes when you have a motor in the center, like this one. So you have a motor here and you have the drivetrain here. One of the big challenges is you have loads of power being generated here and it's being put into this drivetrain. Now with the traditional chain and derailleur, you can put a lot of stress on that. But the nice thing about this is it can really handle that power. On the top end of the power it handles actually about 100 newton meters of torque, which is pretty significant. But actually you see this also happen in some commercial applications where you're carrying cargo and you really have to carry a heavy load. So the idea that you can have a lot of torque coming out of the motor going into this drivetrain, this is a critical piece to make this whole thing work. And you figure if it can handle that, it can handle most other things that you throw out it. And that's generally been our experience. It's pretty durable. So I wanted to get a little bit deeper into some of the technical specifications, but I'm not gonna go too deep. If you want more information on that, they have pretty comprehensive information on their website and they also have a pretty extensive manual as well. But basically, as I said, it's a continually variable transmission. This one is called the N380 and they have all these different versions which are made for different applications like lightweight city version that might not have as much of a range of gear. So they have actually like an N330 which basically is 330 degrees of gear range. So basically that means you're gonna either chop off a little bit of the low end gear or the high end gear. And what that means more specifically is easier to pedal like up a hill for a low gear or when you're riding at a faster rate of speed, if you're in a higher gear, you don't have to spin as fast. And so having that range allows you to kind of hit those two extremes a little bit easier. And now you can also adjust the gears. Like if you have this small cog here and the big cog here, if you put a larger cog here, this will lower gear, change the ratio a little bit. You know, so you have these different options, but generally you're just gonna stick with what the bike manufacturer specifies there. You might be wondering, how does this relate to other drivetrain systems out on the market? You're not really gonna find any other continually variable transmissions out there, but you might find other internally geared hubs. Generally, they're not gonna have as much of a range. There is one that has actually more range or a couple, and one of the more popular ones that we offer is called Roloff. And we have another video on that topic as well, but the Roloff is a 14 speed internally geared hub and it has 526% gear range. That hub is a little bit more specialized. It's, it's significantly more expensive. And you know, it's something to consider if you want a little bit more efficiency. One thing I should note that this, it's not quite as efficient as a traditional derailleur or a Roloff hub. And to some people that's really important, to many people riding in urban environment with the electric assist, it's not that big of a deal. They're willing to kind of take that slight hit in efficiency. I personally think it's not a bad way to go. But if you are pedaling it without power, you might find that you feel it a little bit. So, you know, it's, a, it's something to consider there. But then a traditional derailleur system, you might find 
some of the wider range of gears, you might be somewhere around that 380%. You can go upwards as somewhere around 500%, say on like one of the most wide range gears, which is like a, say like a SRAM Eagle, 12 speeds. I said I wasn't gonna go too deep, but I did, I'm sorry. Okay, moving on. So I wanted to include in the video the way that these planets and the input ring and output ring work, but actually Enviolo did an amazing job and they have this really cool animation. So I'm just gonna kind of throw that in the video and I hope you guys just appreciate that. Tilting the balls changes their contact diameters and varies the speed ratio. In this illustration of a NuVinci hub designed for bicycles, the blue ring on the left represents the output, the rear wheel of a bike. The red ring on the right represents the input, the sprocket being driven by pedaling. In the middle, you see the rotating ball supported and controlled by the idler. The control rod moves the idler back and forth. It is adjusted by twisting the shifter located on the bike's handlebar. As the rider adjusts the shifter, the idler moves from left to right, tilting the axis of the rotating balls and changing the transmission ratio. In underdrive, the input disc spins faster than the output disc, perfect for starting from a stop or climbing hills. As the rider smoothly adjusts the twist grip, both discs begin to spin at the same speed. Then as the rider continues to adjust the shifter and overdrive is reached, the output disc spins faster than the input disc. So we've been talking mostly about the manual version of Enviolo, but there's also an automatic version, or as they call it, automatic which I think something like that, automatique. I think it's supposed to be like French or something like that. It's a little bit troubling for me to say, like I wanna just say automatic, but it sounds nicer the way that they put it, but you know, whatever. So basically it's just a fully automatic shifting system. It works with the Bosch motor system. Uh, you can also use it without the Bosch motor system, but with the motor system, or that's more specifically like what we're focused here on, but basically it's a fully automatic system and it can work with the Bosch motor system. I think they're also starting to work with some other motor systems. Actually, Harley Davidson is introducing a bike with this system on it, but the automatic version works with the electric bike motor system like Bosch. Primarily they work with Bosch, but I think they're starting to expand to other motor systems as well. And you can actually program the system directly within inside the Bosch HMI, the human machine interface, or the display as I like to call it in simple terms, keep it simple. Yeah, so that basically you just program in how fast you wanna pedal and then the bike just shifts automatically. And it's pretty nice. It's really nice for people that maybe are not so familiar with how to shift gears or just don't wanna worry about it. Or actually another common application is cargo bikes, whether it be commercial or for carrying kids. As I explained before, you know, you could be distracted sometimes or really not like wanna focus on your shifting. And the idea that it can do it automatically is pretty nice. Last thing I want to talk about is what bikes you might see this drivetrain on. Every year we're seeing more and more bike manufacturers add a bike to their lineup with the Enviolo and often paired with the Gates belt drive. Now Risa Mueller was one brand that we're pretty heavy with and they offer that pretty much across their full lineup. And they're actually the largest purchaser of Enviolo hubs in the world. Hope they don't mind me sharing that. So they offer it for all their bikes and it's pretty nice. And and internally, I think that's one of the more popular drivetrains that people go for, especially once they get an opportunity to test it out. And then we're seeing other manufacturers. Turn is another manufacturer that we're seeing more and more bikes. They have it on their GSD, which is their cargo bike, as well as the HSD. They have the fully automatic version, which is pretty nice. I should mention that Risa Muir also has the automatic version on their new Paxter 70. Another bike manufacturer we see offering this is Gazelle. They have the Ultimate C380. They have some other models in Europe, which hopefully we're gonna see them come here as well, like the C380 Plus, but that's another kind of similar setup. It's like a sporty sort of trekking bike that has this setup with the belt. A lot of different cargo bikes. So you have the Urban Arrow, which, only is offered with the Enviolo, or at least in the US. I think they used to offer it with another internal hub, but it only came here with the Enviolo, and I think that's a good way to go. I think you can also retrofit that bike with other things like the belt and the auto shifter, but don't quote me on that. 
And then we have uh, another bike that we offer in our shop. We're one of the few dealers in the country. It's the Butcher's Bicycle. So it's a three wheeled cargo bike and that's offered both with the standard Enviolo shifter as well as the automatic version. And both of them have been pretty popular, although I think tend to sell a little bit more of the automatic version in that particular instance. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, people using that cargo bike to carry kids, which is the primary application. It makes a lot of sense. I think that's mostly it. I know that there's a lot of other ones in Europe and that sort of thing, but in the US, that's primarily it. I think there's a couple other manufacturers that we don't specifically work with that I'm not as familiar with. Like one of them I think is Priority, but I don't know that brand so well, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but hopefully you guys found this video to be helpful. Do you have experience with the Enviolo Hub? What do you think? What's your experience? Do you enjoy it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I personally am a really big fan. Most of our customers seem to be as well. We're gonna do more of these sort of videos. If there's anything that you wanna see in the future, let us know as well in the comments and uh, we'll see you soon. All right.